Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. It's time to go through a Thailand subtree suggestion that was passed to developers a little bit ago. We're going to be having a look at the ground tech tree version, and previously we've had a look at the naval one and also the helicopter one, but they did also pass an aviation one and a ground one a while ago. The reason why we're having a look at them now is because, of course, the F5 was added to the game, and I was waiting for at least a little bit of a reason to kind of cover them. Since a lot of these vehicles are very similar, or there are slight modifications of other vehicles, it isn't as interesting as it may be, but there are a bunch of unique ones which are quite nice, and also have a bit of history behind them, which is pretty cool. So, we'll go through the whole thing. If you want to see it for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description so you can go check it out yourself. Let's have a look. For rank 1, we start off with the Vickers 6-ton, the Type B. In 1933, the Royal Thai Army ordered 10 Carden Lloyd 6-ton marquees. These were light tanks from England. These vehicles, built by Vickers Armstrong, were officially named the Type 76 light tanks, 12 more Vickers 6-ton Type Bs were ordered in 1938, officially known as the Type 81 light tanks. All vehicles were retired in 1952, and they did play a role in the war by participating in the conflict between Thailand and Indochina between December 1940 and 1941. These vehicles had access to a 3-pounder gun, the 47mm, and obviously look very similar to the Vickers E in the uh, Swedish tech tree. Thailand also used the MA Greyhound. In 1957, the Royal Thai Army received 25 MA armoured vehicles from the Royal Thai Police, which plays a role in maintaining internal security while they are always political changes and the use of force against communist terrorists in the 4th Army area and also 3rd Army area. During 1971-72, communist terrorists carried out violent attacks at Nan province. The government therefore uses uh, the armoured cars to protect the road construction for the Department of Highways, and when the situation was resolved, they were discharged in the year of 1973. They're pretty standard, uh, they have a 37mm gun M6 and also the 50 cal on the top with the 30 cal 2. Pretty much the same vehicle that you've seen many times over. There's also an SBAAG, the Type 76. After the revolution in 1932, the Siamese army ordered anti-aircraft guns from Vickers by installing a QF-2 anti-aircraft gun on the Mark IV Dragon carriage. It was put into service in 1933 with the official name Type 76 self-propelled anti-aircraft gun. It was used during the suppression of the Boeradet Rebellion, and also used during the Franco-Thai War, and in the defense of Bangkok, concurrently with the Type 78 searchlight truck, and then was replaced in the role by the Type 77 anti-aircraft artillery, and the, which was used after the Second World War until being retired in 1957. This is basically a box which has access to an Armstrong Sidley petrol engine, and the good old pom-pom gun on it. You also have the Staghound, the T-17E2, which in 1949, Thailand ordered 25 of them, which was divided into 25 army vehicles, and then eventually 23 police vehicles, using the official name uh, Type 92 Armoured Car, with both regular models. There was also a modified version, which used the Japanese 20mm, the Type 97, and also the Danish Madsen 20mm cannon. The Staghound was in use until 1959, and then decommissioned and retired in 1972. There was also an M3 half-track, but this one is slightly different to ones we've seen previously. It has access to a 47mm Hotchkiss gun, uh, with a turret as well, and then also a Type 92 7.7mm heavy machine gun. This was used in the Manhattan Rebellion in 1951. There's also another M3 half-track. This one actually has the 105mm. Basically, what the Royal Thai Army did in the Cold War is they took their M3 half-tracks and took one of them and decided to uh, create a prototype by adding the Type 80 light howitzer to it, which was the Bofors H37, which ended up being the 105mm. 
What you find is a lot of British vehicles in these areas, and another one pops up at rank 3, the FV-101 Scorpion. This is a light tank which was purchased by the Royal Thai Army from Britain once again, and it has been in service since 1978, and they use the name Type 21 Light Tank. It's basically been used since then, and also used during the Thai Lao border war, and used mainly for reconnaissance. This vehicle has access to a 7.6mm L23A1, and also a coaxial 7.62mm2, along with the good old Cummins engine, and a little bit of aluminium armour. Another light vehicle they use is the Commando V-150. In 1977, the Thai Ministry of Defence considered selecting armoured vehicles for the Royal Thai Army. The Royal Thai Navy, the Air Force and also the police set up a committee to consider and select a V-150 armoured vehicle and then proceeded to purchase it, in which the Army's version is armed with a 90mm for use as an armoured reconnaissance vehicle. This is the Cockrell Mark III, which, you know, we should all be used to by now. Thailand also used the Bulldog, the M41A3 specifically. It's been in service with the Royal Thai Army since 1962. The US supplied and also uh, supported 200 tanks during the Cold War and was used to maintain peace in the country during the political turmoil in it. It was used to protect the northeastern border during the Vietnamese attack when it came to the Thai border. It's a standard A3, it has the 76mm M32A1 rifle cannon, has a 50 cal, a 30 cal, and the standard 6 cylinder 500 horsepower engine. The M41 A3 was retired in 2022. They also have the M151 with the M40 recoilless rifle. Uh, this was given to them during the Vietnam War. The Royal Thai Army deployed the recoilless rifle on the M151. Basically, um, it was once again used to defend the Vietnamese border in Thailand and also the war in Thai Laos border in Thailand as well. It's pretty simple. It's just a jeep with a recoilless rifle on it. You also have the M163 VADS, uh, the good old Vulcan M113. The Royal Thai Army ordered a bunch of these, uh, basically, uh, to, of course, act as an anti-aircraft artillery battalion near the front lines. Uh, they officially named it the Type 20 Vulcan Self-Propelled Anti-Aircraft Gun. as the 20mm M61 Vulcan, the rotary cannon, and all of the standard stuff from the M113, including the two-stroke diesel with the 212 horsepower. They also have the M48A5 Patton. The Royal Thai Army purchased 105 M48A5 Pattons from the US. They started service in 1979, stationed in the Cavalry Battalion, directly under the 2nd Infantry Division and 6th Infantry Division. The M48A5 was the main battle tank of the Royal Thai Army for more than 20 years until the M60 tank was used in conjunction with it. They also used to protect the eastern border in the Prechin Buri province. Basically this one has the 105 M68 on it and also has the 750 horsepower diesel engine. The aforementioned M60A1 pattern is also used by Thailand um, basically since 1991. They ordered 53 of them from the US reserves, and these are now stationed with the 20th Cavalry Battalion and are still in service. This uses the 105mm M68 and also the twin turbo diesel engine, the 750 horsepower one. Another M113 turns up, the A2 specifically, with the tow launcher on top of it. Uh, basically, during the military parade in 1996, uh, it was found that this vehicle was participating in the, the parade. And with further investigations, it was found that the vehicles were actually used in the anti-tank company of the 2nd Infantry Division. Thailand has six of these vehicles, and it is a standard M113 chassis, with access to a 275 horsepower engine and also the BGM-71 tow with a 50 caliber machine gun. Thailand also has the M901A3 ITV. 
Basically, this vehicle has been in service since the mid-90s and currently in service with the 12th Mechanized Infantry Brigade Queen's Guard. It was used during the 2006 Taiku d'Etat and it appears to control the peace in Bangkok along with other armoured vehicles as well. This has access to the 2 M220A2 TOTU launcher with the 6-cylinder diesel 275 horsepower engine very similar to the M901 we have in the game. There's also the Commando Stingray. In 1985, the Royal Thai Army needed a new light tank, and this was to be put into service with the 1st Cavalry Division. The Stingray tank was purchased for this role from Cadillac Gage in America, and they put into service 106 Stingray tanks, as well as tank cannons and spare parts. It overall entered service fully in 1989 and has the official name Type 32 Light Tank. The vehicle itself has the L7 105mm rifle tank gun. It also has a V8 diesel engine of 535 horsepower and is uh, basically covered in aluminium, so only 23mm worth of protection. Thailand also uses the M60A3 TTS. They ordered 125 of them through their FMS program. They received 125 tanks from the US Reserve, and they entered service in 1996, with the mission of enhancing their border defense. During the Praia Vihir Temple dispute between Thailand and Cambodia, because Cambodian T-55 and BTR-60 tanks were discovered close to the Thai border, in 2011. This has the M68 E1 105mm cannon with the 750 horsepower engine and all the standard other stuff you see from a TTS. Thailand also uses the M41 Stingray. Basically in the magazine Samarabam, there was a column which wrote about an experimental installation of a turret and combat system of the Stingray tank to be installed on the M41 A3 tank of the Royal Thai Army. In experiments, the size of the Stingray and turret rings could be mounted together. Of Well, the M41 turret ring and the Stingray matched, basically. But um, it had to be modified, some components, because the new turret was lower than the M41A3, and the ammunition load was less, because the ammo rack couldn't be used the same way due to different calibers. After the installation, it was found that the chassis had a larger size, but could be exchanged for more intense, more accurate shooting, and also much better aiming system. Basically, this is a bulldog chassis with a Stingray turret. <laughs> so, it has access to the 500 horsepower, um, six-cylinder air-cooled petrol engine. It also has, you know, the armor of the bulldog, but also the 105mm L7. The BTR-3RK also makes it. Basically, in the year 2007, the Royal Thai Army signed an order for the BTR-3E1 from Ukraine. The Royal Thai Army has a total of 238 BTR-3s divided into the first batch in 2017, and then 2007, you had 96, the second was in 2011, and then also 121 in the third in 2013, which is just kind of crazy. They have a bunch of different variants of it, including a commander version, medical version, a mortar-mounted 81mm version, and 120mm version, with a total of 12 being in this model. The one we're looking at specifically, though, has access to a 326 horsepower diesel engine, four Stugna P80 gems, and also one Kharkiv Morozov DBKT 12.7, which is, of course, the NSVT. You also have the DTI AAPC. This was in 2016. The Royal Thai Army together, or sorry, the Royal Thai Navy, together with the Defense Technology Institute, conducted research and design on an 8x8-wheeled armored vehicle for missions with the Marines. This wheeled armored vehicle has been carried, or the research for it has been carried out for a while now, since uh, 2018 to 2021, where they've decided that the armaments for it, eh, they're, they're kind of up in the air for. Right now, they have the Mark 44 Bushmaster 2 on it, the 30mm, a 7.62mm coaxial machine gun, and also a 450 horsepower engine to move around this 8x8 hydropneumatic double wishbone suspension, which looks very similar to the Patria. We also have the M60A3 TIFCS. 
In 2015, the Royal Thai Army commissioned Elbit Systems in Israel to implement a comprehensive upgrade of the M60A3 to basically give the M60A3 the ability to operate in day and night operations. They changed two main systems on it, the Thermal Imaging Fire Control System and also an auto tracking mode was added so it could automatically capture and track targets. It also stays locked onto the target no matter which direction the target is moving and also the electric gun slash turret driving system on the turret roof is equipped with a HMA, a head mirror assembly system. There's also an index loader system for reloading ammunition and it makes the load, the load uh, reload a lot easier, more convenient and also faster. As for the M68-105 cannon, a new temperature controlled casing was, uh, was put on it too. This upgrade was received in 2016. This means that the base is still the same, M68-3, still has the M68-E1-105 and also the 750 horsepower engine. We also have the BTR-3E1. Uh, this one uh, is another variant of the BTR that we talked about previously. This specific one has access to the ZTM 30mm cannon and also a pair of Kyiv DB barrier anti-tank missiles, along with all of the other stats of the other BTR. You also have the T-84 Oplot T. In 2011, the Royal Thai Army ordered 49 Oplots from Ukraine, with modified components such as the radio communication equipment and air conditioning system to suit the climate of Thailand, which is of course different from Ukraine. The delivery of the first five tanks began in 2013 until 2018, but unfortunately was delayed due to the ongoing conflict in the country. The vehicle has access to a 125mm smoothbore KBA-3 cannon, also has access to a 1200 horsepower diesel engine, and of course modular composite armor with ERA and also APS in tow. There's also the Panis R600. Basically, the Defense and Security 2019 event, Fanat Assembly Company Limited brought the R600 8x8 wheeled armored vehicle in the event. The idea is this will have a bunch of different variants on it, uh, which will have access to not just anti-aircraft, but missile launcher amphibious, and also ones with a 120mm hit fact turret, and also a 105mm turret too. So we could maybe see some of those variants. You also have the Panos AFV-420. This was also at the Defense and Security 2019 event. This is a uh, basic 4x4 AFV-420 armored vehicle that could also have a bunch of different variants on it, including a 30mm turret, 120mm mortar, and also even an anti-aircraft version with some anti-tank versions too. That is all the stuff in the Thai subtree, and as you can see, there's quite a lot of it, and would be a great addition to any nation that ends up getting it. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd like to thank Schnitzel Stroker, Brendan Quinn, Vilnaeus, Character Fuel, Carrion Crow, Nicholas Richardson, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Wartinder, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, B. Young, Opium Prime, Masonocrat, Lafouche, Alan Hacker, Sam Arslan, Uncle Bean, and Derek R. for supporting the channel.